So let's get started with analysis of transactions. So I've got five transactions that I'm gonna go through with you guys. It's gonna take me about 20 minutes probably to complete this. So exactly what I said earlier on, make sure you are working with me. So the instruction, analyze the following transactions. Let me just quickly get a pen out. Okay, so we're gonna analyze the following transactions in the table below. Assume all transactions relate to AB Limited and their financial year ends on the 29th of Feb 2020. And then very important, they're telling us bank is favorable. In other words, bank is an asset. Right, so let's look at our very first transaction. Issued a check on the 3rd of March 2019 to pay the shareholders for the amount owed for dividends for the previous financial year. Right, now immediately guys, issued a check. So obviously one account affected has to be my bank account. So often we find you guys are absolutely fine with the first part of the transaction. Issued a check, so your bank account is affected. Now the second account is where you often go wrong or you make an error. Why did we issue a check? To pay the shareholders for the amount owed for dividends for the previous financial year. So we are not declaring a dividend for the current financial year. All we're doing is paying our shareholders for the amount we owed for the previous year, the previous financial year. So the second account affected is not dividends on ordinary shares. Instead, shareholders for dividends. Okay, I'm going to say that one more time because you guys tend to make an error when it comes to this particular transaction. So remember, we are not declaring a dividend for the current financial year. We are paying our shareholders for the previous financial year. So the other account affected is shareholders for dividends. Right, let's now look at what we're going to debit, what we're going to credit. So obviously, bank is an asset and money is now leaving our bank account, so bank will be credited with 103,000. So account credit is obviously your bank account. Shareholders for dividend, I'm hoping you guys can see this. Remember, shareholders for dividend is obviously a liability, right? And your liability, because you are now paying your shareholders, your liability is now decreasing. So shareholders for dividend will be debited with the 103,000. Okay, so let's fill that in. Account debit, shareholders for dividend. Account credit is obviously your bank account. By crediting bank, assets, remember your assets are now gonna decrease by 103,000, money is leaving your bank account. And shareholders for dividend, your liability, you are now owing less, so liabilities also decrease by 103,000. Okay, first transaction completed, and hopefully there's not gonna be any confusion if this does appear in your exam. Let's now move on to the second transaction. So the second transaction reads as follows. On the 1st of April, the company issued 100,000 shares at an issue price of 8 Rand each. All shares were sold. Let's just add that on, 8 Rand each. Right, so once again, guys, we have to identify what are the two accounts affected by this transaction. So immediately, the company is issuing or selling shares. So one account affected is my ordinary share capital. And the second account, all shares were sold, which means money is going into the business's bank account. So the second account is obviously bank. Bank. 
Right, let's start off with ordinary share capital. So obviously, owner's equity is going to increase by 100,000 shares, right? And the issue price is 8 Rand each. So we don't need our calculators for this. So your share capital is going to increase by 800,000. Okay, remember your capital is increasing. And at the same time, your bank balance, remember money is now going into your bank account. So your bank account is now going to increase by 800,000. Okay, so that was quite simple, straightforward. So account debit is obviously bank. And account credit is ordinary share capital. Okay, once again, bank is favorable. So my bank balance increases assets by 800,000. And ordinary share capital by crediting ordinary share capital, owner's equity also increases by 800,000. Okay. Right, second transaction completed. Let's now move on to transaction number three. The company paid SARS provisional tax of 120,000 on the 31st of August 2019. Right, so immediately the company paid provisional tax. Now again, guys, remember the whole uh, concept behind revision is so that you learn from errors made by past students. We are not telling you that the income tax expense is 120,000. We are telling you that the company paid provisional tax of 120,000. So there's no expense involved here. We are paying towards a liability. So the two accounts affected will be SARS income tax, not income tax, SARS income tax. And the second account, because we're making a payment, obviously the second account is bank. Right, let's start off with SARS income tax. So remember, SARS income tax liability, you could say it's an asset, you are making a payment, but I'm going to stick with liability. So we're making a payment towards our tax expense. So in other words, the amount that we owe the receiver is now going to decrease by 120,000. So SARS income tax is definitely going to be debited. Your bank account, bank asset, so obviously, because we're making a payment, our bank balance is now going to decrease by 120,000. Here's your credit. So once again, guys, remember the error that students make, instead of debiting SARS, they want to debit income tax. Remember, you will only debit income tax at the end of the financial year when you know what your net profit is. We are not at the stage where we know what our net profit is. Okay, so let's now complete this in the table. So we've debited SARS income tax and we credited bank. And obviously, once again, my assets decreasing by 120,000 and your liability also decreasing by 120,000. Okay, right, let's now move on to the next transaction. I'm hoping you guys are getting this and it's coming back. As I said, it's revision and often you don't get tested on analysis of transaction, but we don't want to take that risk. Right, transaction four. Income tax for the year was calculated at 230,000. Income tax for the year. So whereas in transaction four, they are now giving me the actual expense Transaction three was giving me the provisional payments made. So in transaction four, I am now given my tax expense for the year. So two accounts affected will be the following. Okay, so the first account will be income tax. 
and the second account, I am owing this income tax to SARS. So remember SARS income tax. Right, let's start off with income tax. Income tax is your expense. So you are going to debit income tax with the expense amount of 230000 And remember, SARS income tax is the liability. I am now owing the receiver, or SARS, an amount of 230000 Okay, right, so we've debited income tax, account debit, income tax, and we are going to credit SARS income tax. Income tax is an expense, so immediately owner's equity is now going to decrease by 230000 Remember, tax decreases profit, so owner's equity minus 230000 SARS income tax, I am now owing the receiver an amount of 230000 30,000. Okay, right, the last transaction. So let's look at transaction number five, and then I promise we'll take a quick break. Transaction five reads as follows. Stationery on hand at the beginning of the financial year amounted to 2,000 rand. Right, now this particular adjustment, guys, you often would have seen this adjustment in grade 11. So stationary on hand at the beginning of the financial year amounted to 2,000 Rand. Now remember, at the beginning of the financial year, all your year-end adjustments from the previous financial year needs to be reversed. So in other words, we have an account at the beginning of the year, consumables, on hand or consumable stores on hand and we have an amount of 2000 rand on hand from last year an amount of stationery now remember consumables on hand is an asset it is unused stationery from the previous financial year now in the current financial year you're going to end up using that stationery it's not going to stay as an asset so at the beginning of the financial year you now need to reverse this entry in other words make it an expense so how do we reverse an entry okay so we've got a debit of 2000 we therefore now need to credit consumables on hand with the amount of 2000 okay so we crediting consumables on hand because remember that stationery is no longer going to be an asset it's going to end up being used it's going to become an expense and we then going to debit the expense account called stationery so stationery debit with your 2000 rand okay so that's an example of a reversal. Okay. Right, so let's do that. Let's now fill this in. So remember, we debited consumables on hand or consumable stores on hand. We credited stationery. Okay. Consumables on hand is an asset, but because we're going to use the stationery, it's no longer an asset. So minus 2000 and stationery owner's equity, it is an expense. So my profit is going to decrease by 2000. Okay. 